So we're going to be looking at what exothermic and endothermic mean and a word called enthalpy in this one. So you've just done a couple of experiments and you're mixing some different chemicals together to see if they increase the temperature or decrease the temperature. Now if something increases in temperature, then it feels hot to us. If something decreases in temperature, it feels cold because it absorbs the heat energy out of our skin and that's why it feels cold. It's absorbing our heat energy. We can use these ideas to determine if a reaction is what we call exothermic or endothermic. The prefix for ex, the prefix exo means outside. So either it is outside or it's giving something out. Thermic means heat, so giving off heat. So that means it would feel what? Warm. warm. It would feel warm or feel hot. Okay? This means that the energy, heat energy, is being released. What this means is that the enthalpy, or the energy in the bonds and the kinetic energy, it's all of the energy involved, enthalpy, it's all of the energy in the molecules, both within the bonds, between the particles, and the kinetic energy. That all together is called enthalpy. This means that the enthalpy has dropped. Now, energy cannot be created or destroyed, so it has to go somewhere. So what happens, an example I've got here, is steam being condensed into liquid water, is that... The steam, the particles are moving really fast. They've got a high enthalpy. If we remove heat energy from that somehow, maybe by making the steam hit a cold surface, then it will transfer its heat energy to that cold surface, making that cold surface window, whatever it is, feel warm, and turn that steam into liquid. But for this reaction to occur, first of all, we need to activate it. And... That's what this little hump is here. We see that enthalpy goes up before it drops down. The particles need to collide, as it were, if it's a chemical reaction. They need to collide with enough energy and the right orientation for a reaction to occur, if it's a chemical reaction. So something like respiration or something like combustion, which are two very good examples of this. In your experiment, which one, there was more than one, but which one was exothermic? So felt hotter because it was releasing that energy to its surroundings. Yep. Which was? Uh, okay. So when we dissolve sodium hydroxide, you're releasing heat energy. What that's saying is that the energy required, first we give a little bit of energy, so that's the energy of the water, the heat energy in the water, give a little bit of energy to break open the sodium hydroxide into sodium ions and hydroxide ions, then when it makes its relationship with the water molecules, that releases more energy than it actually needed in the first place. And that's what you feel is heat energy. This little hump here is called activation energy. Okay? And we give it the symbol big E, little a, activation energy. It's the amount of energy required just to kickstart this happening. And although you think of freezing as making things colder, so surely it's endothermic, not exothermic, actually the energy of the particles is dropping and that's what you need to think about. Mm -hmm. okay. So, just a quick note here on the graph. This is just showing time or reaction quotient. This is showing our enthalpy, which is the total energy of the particles. The opposite to exothermic is endothermic. And if exothermic felt hot, then this one should feel cold. And this is because energy is being absorbed. And good examples are photosynthesis, which is the opposite of respiration. Boiling, which is the opposite of condensation. And melting, which is the opposite of freezing, solidification. So they're all opposites. So I've shown boiling here. And we all know that you have to put heat energy in to boil a jug or boil something on the Bunsen burner. The activation energy for this is a lot higher. You actually have to put in more energy than it requires to go from here to here. Okay, you actually need to put in more energy than that. And then it will release a little bit of energy out here, which will keep the reaction going. So for this one, the activation energy is all the way here. Now the other thing that you need to know about these two concepts is a thing called delta H, or enthalpy change. That's from this line to this line. 
and so it's going to be a positive value in, in an endothermic reaction. Conversely, in an exothermic reaction, so I'll flip them back, in an exothermic reaction, we're going from this line to this line, and you can see that it's going down. So it's going to be a negative value. And that's the easy way for us to know that. All right? So these are two key concepts that you need to know about for us to go forward in this topic.